Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Game Kill. My name is Naveed, aka Barely Average Gaming. And today we have a really special man with us today as our guest. This man is one of the more successful UFC fighters out there. He is also a streamer. And recently, he has had the experience of a lifetime. We have Mr. Zayaf here today with us. Zayaf, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, yeah, you know, like you mentioned, um, I'm one of the uh, uh, one of the top UFC four players. had a, had a really great experience recently. Headed to uh, UFC 265. Met up with a couple of people. A lot of fun. And um, you know, I got asked to be here, and I was like, yeah, you know, this curse doesn't affect me, so uh, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Yeah, for, for everyone listening to this, well, uh, there is a rumor going around in the UFC 4 community that anyone who comes into this uh, as, an inter uh, as an interview, they end up having some sort of a bad luck. So we've had a few instances, but looks like Zayaf, uh, with his current form, I've also been following his streams recently, looks like he's in safe hands. I hope you are, <laughs> at the very least. So too, you know, I, uh, I really do hope so. But yeah. if I lose the next fight, I'm blaming you. <laughs> We're going to put this on the record. Um, at the same time, again, like you mentioned, uh, UFC 265, an experience of a lifetime. Um, I believe the event was in Houston, a main event by Cyril Gan versus Derek uh, Lewis. Um, yeah. So just run me through the experience. I believe you met a few individuals from the community. Um, you also met up with a few fighters. So just give us a, give us a vicarious experience of what you went through. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a lot of fun, you know, obviously we went there, um, I got there, I think two fights before the prelims started, um, so we got there during the early prelims, we got there early, so that means there wasn't, you know, a huge line, and um, obviously the earlier you get, the more fights you're going to be able to see, but um, that also goes in another way, there's less people there, so there's less people blocking your view um, the earlier you get there, and there were some really, really good fights on the, you know, on the early prelims, there were some great knockouts and uh, some really good fights. Um, and then, yeah, like you mentioned, I met up with a couple of people. I met up with Yuri Thunderdome and Pablo Grips, also known as Devorator. And they were really cool. You know, it took us like 20 minutes to find each other because the, um, the arena is just massive. Um, and we were just running around in circles trying to find each other. But once we did it, it was really cool. We took a picture. We talked about some stuff. Um, it wasn't as awkward as you might think. It was, it was very natural which I don't think any of us were expecting, but it was really nice. Um, and then, yeah, I got to meet Sean O'Malley, which was really cool. He seemed awesome. He was taking pictures with all the fans. And then I was also right next to the to the walkout, uh, like, entrance. So I got to see every single fighter go uh, go by the walkout. So, you know, I got to see Jose Aldo. I got to see Surreal God. And that was really awesome. Yeah, and um, for a lot of the community, I think everyone, especially some of the UFC fighters, I'm really happy with the performance from Jose Aldo. So you got to see that up, up front. What, or did you have any expectations uh, about how that fight is going to go and if uh, Jose Aldo was able to meet them or exceed them? Yeah, I mean, I thought Jose Aldo was going to win. I thought he was the better fighter. I thought that was pretty clear early. Um, but what I didn't expect was how fast he was. I mean, this dude... You know, you always hear about how fast Jose Aldo is, but you don't even understand it until you see it in person. This dude is blinding fast. And have it especially, be, you know, considering he was at featherweight for most of his career, and he's still, you know, outspeeding bantamweights and a fast one. Pedro Munoz is one of the fastest fighters in the division. That, that was really something special. That, that was the main event for me. Absolutely. And uh, for a lot of people watching, including myself, who've been a UFC fan for a while, um, that was some performance. And um, just to put things into perspective, um, a lot of people who are actually players in the UFC community have actually transitioned as fans of mixed martial arts, as fans of um, UFC in particular. So for us, it's very special when we get to know that one of, the, one of us has, has had that experience. So hopefully once uh, the whole situation with COVID ends up sorting itself out, Hopefully, we'll see more of these events happening throughout the world and for the entire UFC for, and the EA UFC community to enjoy. Um, speaking of EA UFC, sir, you've been on a journey. You've had an amazing experience. You've had a lot of successes. Um, but I, what I want to go back to is the beginning. How did you start your journey? Where, where did it all start for you, both when it comes to as a competitor and also as a streamer? Man, I mean, I started... So I... Um... I didn't really know much about, you know, about the UFC, um, 
product in general. I wasn't a huge fan of MMA when I got the game, but um, basically I, you know, one day I got some random UFC four video recommended to me. And then um, I watched it and I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. Um, but then I got another one and, and that one was by, uh, by actually Marshall mind. And, um, you know, I was like, okay, this is, this is pretty cool. I'm going to keep watching these. And I kept watching them and I was like, okay, you know, I kind of, I kind of want to be able to play this. But, um, at the time I didn't own a console. So what I actually had to do was I, I started sharing my brother's Xbox one, his base Xbox, um, to play UFC four, just on a TV. Right. And then, um, from there, I just kept playing. I kept getting better. And after a couple months, um, I found uh, the small league. It was called IFL at the time. Uh, most of you probably know as primetime now. And I, I got invited to this league. And um, from there, I just kept going and going. And then at the end of UFC 3, I moved over to PlayStation. I saved up with my own money. And I bought my, my first ever, you know, own console. You know, my first ever console, uh, a PS4 Pro. And then for my birthday, I got a monitor. So, you know, I started actually trying to play competitively by the end. So, you know, by the end of UFC 3, the first ever real competitive thing I did was playing in the Romero Parker tournament, end of UFC 3, and I made it to the quarterfinals, which was surprising because nobody really knew who I was. I didn't really, you know, know who I was at the time. So it was pretty surprising, but from there, you know, I got into the ESFL and I wasn't the best player to start. You know, I went um, 10 and 5 my first season. I was kind of a journeyman. But through that, I, I got a lot better. And then through esports, when I went 3 and 1, my final fight was beating Rayhan. I, I beat him by, by, um, by Rare Naked Choke in my final fight. And then I got invited to Dark. You know, Romero saw that. He thought I was, you know, good enough now that I could get into Dark. So then I joined them, I improved, and then I, you know, rest is history. You know, 8-0, season two of ESFL, double champion, and all that just came from a, just came from a base Xbox on the TV in my living room. Yeah, for, for everyone who is watching this stream, um, what you need to recognize is how good this man is when he has a controller in his hands. The fact that uh, when we call... Uh, what we call a double champ in the UFC community is a person who has won both in Xbox and on PS. So uh, considering the fact that those are very two uh, dynamics, uh, some of the input registry is very different. Um, you've been able to overcome that. And again, that is something which uh, for a lot of us in the community is, a, initially it was pretty unfathomable until you were able to do it. So again, I think big, big props to you for that. And um, again, we are very excited to see you in action in more of these leagues, hopefully moving forward. Um, and like you mentioned, uh, Romero invited you to join the Camp Dark. So we see a lot of different camps in the community like T4H, like yourself, like EK, uh, making a lot of buzz, making a lot of uh, camaraderie amongst yourselves. How does that help uh, into your own game? How does how has uh, being a member of the dark improved your game, or uh, in terms of community, how has it helped you in general? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just we we view ourselves just as a like a really close, you know, we're a group of friends, right? We all know each other, we've known each other for a while, and it's not that kind of thing where it's like oh, you know, we're, we're kind of, we're just, we just stick to ourselves. We don't play anyone else, that kind of thing. But it's more like every time we know um, somebody has a fight or somebody needs to improve, that kind of thing, there's always somebody there to help them out. You know, there's always somebody online. I think we have, I want to say six, seven, mem yeah, seven members right now. So there's always somebody online. And, um, and that's, uh, that's obviously really helped. You know, my first two fights in season two it didn't because I played two dark members I played Romero my first fight and Swiss my second fight but after that you know I could start uh really getting into team dark and start training with them and I really realized just how much they've improved me and how much I've been able to give them in return agreed and um, someone who's been a part of this community myself I believe uh the sense just, just the fact that the level of improvement that you see within yourself, because again, uh, when you're sparring on day-to-day -day basis, like the names that you've mentioned, it's definitely going to elevate your game to another level. And I believe camps like uh, the ones that I've mentioned earlier, all of them are there to improve and facilitate 
growth of this organization. Um, as far as the game itself is concerned, um, there have been certain improvements when it comes to UFC 4. However, we had Ruthless, Ruthless Omni the other day, and he just went in because uh, this game needs a lot of fixing. Uh, what's your perspective, considering you've been very successful at, at it? Uh, what are the things that you believe are required, still required to be fixed? Yeah, you know, um, I'll preface it by saying I think UFC 4 is a big improvement over UFC 3. That is an unpopular opinion to a lot of people. Um, but I've been very vocal about that. But there are definitely a lot of things that, that do need to get fixed. You know, uh, I, was, I was talking about this recently with, um, with some of the dark team. And um, first of all, you know, the knee elbows and the spinning elbow stuff, uh, just too fast. It really is too fast and it needs to go. Um, and that, that's just, you know, I'll start with the striking stuff. The knee elbow, spinning elbow, the spinning sidekick to the head, I think it's called. Um, that, that just tracks you pretty much no matter what, um, you can't slip it, you can't sidestep it. it, it's, it's a very powerful strike and that absolutely needs to go. But I did write up a list that I want to find, um, because it, it has a lot of in-depth stuff that I talked about for, um, for, from what I want improved on UFC 5, because, you know, I've been pretty active as far as, um, suggesting things and um you know just just trying to just trying to better the game um you know a lot of the time I've been called a shell for that kind of thing but you know what what can you do about it but yeah so you've got the the knee elbow stuff the spinning elbows the spinning sidekick on the ground I think some submissions still need a nerf you know I think the rear naked choke is still too powerful um, and the, uh, so is the side saddle arm triangle, but in general, I think the submission system just either, they need to fix it, they need to find a mini game that works, or they need to just remove the submission system and go to transition-based systems, because, you know, we've had the mini games. Uh, we've had all that, we've tried it, and it hasn't worked. Oh, uh, so, excuse me, um, but yeah, we had that, we tried it. It hasn't worked. If they can't figure it out, especially for UFC 5, they just need to remove the submission system entirely, and they need to go to transition-based submissions where, you know, it's all about positioning yourself and going into a sub. So, you know, a really good player could walk in a sub really fast if they know the transitions they need to get to. Um, and that obviously comes with an overhaul of the ground game. You know, this is something we've been asking for for a while. Um, but my main concern is if we're going to overhaul the ground game, we need to do it right. We don't want to do it like the clinch got done in UFC 4. There's a lot of stuff missing in the clinch. There's control positions, double unders, you know, all that kind of thing. You, you can't grind someone. You can't really do anything. Tie clinch against the cage. None of that is in the game. And if they're going to do that, then we might as well stick with the UFC uh, 4 ground game. Because if they're, if they're going to you know, half make it, if it's not going to be fully realized, I don't want it in the game. Um, and I think I, yeah, okay. So uh, for striking, we want to remove uh, the, the speed up combos, the speed up feint combos that are left, you know, the leg kick feint to body kick, uh, to body kick the lead team feint to question mark, that kind of thing. Um, we want to reduce the range on the body uppercut when it's thrown after a jab. You know, you see a lot of people just throwing jab, body, uppercut, jab, body, uppercut, lead hook, body, uppercut. And um, it's just not realistic. It's just not. Um, knees and uppercuts need to more reliably intercept takedowns. Um, hooks and uppercuts need to hit opponents when they're throwing knees. Because right now when you throw a knee, they just whiff right past them. Um, uh, we remove the stamina drain for the guillotine walk around. If someone puts you in a standing guillotine, just start yeah. walking you around <laughs> like a fucking... Just control you. Uh, look at me, and all your salmon is gone. Like that's just—it's not. It doesn't make sense, you know. But um, that's very abbreviated. But those are, I think, the main things that I'd like to be fixed. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people, what you've mentioned would resonate with the community. Um, again, uh, there are certain people who may disagree with what you have to say. But again, um, it's the, the reason why there is a community is the diversity of opinions. Um, on that subject, the community of UFC itself—it's. Um, a very tricky area to navigate, to be honest, because you see all kinds of people. It's a very diverse community, but at the same time, um, more often than not, the community ends up showing the worst of its, uh, the worst of uh, what it has to offer. So there have, I'm pretty sure that you might have had your share of uh, bad or good experiences with the community, 
but in your uh, honest opinion, considering the fact that you've been here for a certain period of time, what do you think the community itself needs to improve? Because like uh, my conversations earlier with all the other streamers and the EA players, the community itself is uh, part of a market that's a multi-billion dollar industry. But the game itself is not getting the recognition that it deserves compared to other fighting games. Uh, and even though it's a fight simulator, but um, maybe the fact that the community is not there, maybe EA is not behind it, or maybe UFC is not behind it as much as they're supposed to be. What do you think that the community has to do in order to get the attention of these uh, big companies? You know, first of all, I think the community needs to learn where the line is drawn as far as toxicity. You know, I think... Um, a lot of the community doesn't understand how far they can reasonably take it. And I think they don't understand the standards that are set by, um, by a company as big as the UFC. We had, um, you know, obviously we had the UFC Esports League very recently. And we were constantly having to post reminders to our competitors who have been, in, you know, in the community for years. The UFC does not allow the banter culture it doesn't allow people going after each other because they view it as toxic and that's one of the main complaints we've gotten from the ufc is the toxicity um the toxicity of the community and the community just doesn't understand that um that not all people view this kind of thing the same way they do you know they say you need to learn to take a joke but you know maybe you need to learn you know when that kind of joke is appropriate and i don't think the community knows that right now i think that's the main problem with the community as as, as of now I completely agree with that. Um, we at GameKill ourselves had a very um, interesting experience, so to say, recently uh, with one of the uh, one of the league owners there. But uh, rather than going into the details of that, I think you have summarized it pretty well. The community itself perhaps needs to understand what the corporate requirements are, what uh, the general audience requires, because at the end of the day, the game only grows if the, com the community itself is receptive of uh, all kinds of diversities. Again. We, um, like me, myself sitting in Pakistan and you all the way um, in North America, the difference uh, of opinions, the way people look, the way people uh, share their opinions is going to be very different. So um, I think inclusiveness is something that the community needs to be more open-minded about, but um, that's just my two cents on this uh, subject. Um, coming back to the UFC, the game itself, um, Again, like when you started fighting, like you mentioned a few names, I think you started watching Martial Minds and a few other streamers and that really got your juices flowing in terms of getting this game and having some sort of an interest developed into that. So would you like to name a few fighters or streamers that you've really looked up to and maybe even if you want uh, a few shout outs? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, obviously Martial Mind, he's the big one. Um, pretty much everybody has watched him or watches him. You know, at some point, I think he's constantly evolved his content. He's been a very good creator. And um, he, he's really been the hallmark for UFC content creation. You know, I've tried to follow his example as far as being consistent, the uh, the tips I give, that kind of thing. You know, obviously, Prioxis, um really been doing his thing. I remember end of UFC 3, this year was at 5,000 subs. And then, you know, just a year into UFC 4, he's over 40,000. And that's just because of the grind, man. He's, ju he's just been working so hard, streaming every day, uploading every day. It it's pretty amazing to see. You know, Romero, uh, the person I consider to be the best player in the game right now, um, he's been uh, getting more active with his content, you know, and he really gives the best tips in the game, I think. Just it it's, it's unrivaled, his analysis, his knowledge of the game. Um <clears throat> And uh, a few smaller creators, Heem the Dream, he, uh, he streams a lot. Crooks209, one of my team members, obviously doing a ton of work. Uh, he, he's been really great. And then um, I think, yeah, just 50 minutes before we uh, started recording this interview, I actually posted a video on MMA Games channel. He, uh, he reached out to me, asked me to post a video on his channel, but I think he does really good stuff as well. Um, he's kind of the, the fun of the community, you know, he's kind of the light of the community, uh, brings some cool editing, some great commentary, that kind of thing. And, um, I think all of those guys are really great. Um, that's again, um, uh, a lot of people that you've mentioned, um, a lot of really good content that is out there. So for everyone watching, again, a shout out to you all. And, um, hopefully for everyone watching this interview, you, I, I believe you should definitely go and check out these content creators because, um, 
these people have put in the hours, they've, they've put in the grind, and uh, more or less you would want them to succeed and also this community to succeed in general. All right, so Mr. Zaf, you're coming towards the business end of this interview. And uh, again, the way the community views you as a content creator, as one of the more successful fighters, is that uh, there's a lot of polarization. There are certain players in the community who hold very strong opinions about you, be it in your favor or be it against you. Um, so how do you deal with that, uh, that kind of pressure or maybe that kind of uh, feedback? And uh, how do you... A, put up with it, and at the same time, is there any feedback that you feel is unjustified? And perhaps maybe a call out here. Yeah, um, you know, obviously there are a lot of people um, who really support me, and I really appreciate that, you know, especially, you know, the Dart team, a lot of the EK guys, you know, just in general, I think the community has been uh, very positive, but there are, there are a few things that I just think are untrue. You know, um, one of the main things uh, people say to try to discredit me is that I'm a ping merchant, um, that I can only only win on high ping. And I'm sitting there like, I'm playing on the same ping you are. You know, it, it's not my fault. You're from the other, you know, the other end of the world. Um, you know, we got matched up and we both have to deal with the same thing. Um, so, you know, you, you know, you think you'd be so much better on low ping, but you don't even know what I'd be like on low ping, you know? So it's like... I, I, I just think that's a little bit unfair. I can play pretty much, you know, anytime, any place, anywhere. It doesn't really matter to me what the connection is. Um, and I think people just use that as an excuse, to, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think there are, there are a couple call-outs I'd like to make. Um, and just friendly stuff. I'm, I'm friends with these guys. But, you know, first of all, I think we need a, a, a double champ match. You know, I think we do. The only two ever double champs in ESFL history. I think uh, Jamie and I need to have a match. I really do. You know, in ESFL or in esports, I think that needs to happen. We're both double champs. We came from different consoles. Uh, he went from Xbox to PlayStation. I went from PlayStation to Xbox. You know, I beat this camp member. He beat my close friend. You know, I, I think that match needs to happen. And uh, and second of all, I want to call out Goat. Goat 1099. You know, I think he and I have some unfinished business. You know, I'm not happy with how I beat him in the ESFL. You know, I had to stand and guillotine him. I'm not proud of it. I've admitted that. But um, I've improved a lot since then. And I, I want to show that, you know, I, I really am the better player. And I think that's about it. Uh, those are some pretty strong names that you have mentioned. Like you mentioned the other double champ of ESFL, Mr. Swap, Jamie. And also Go1099, who in one of our previous interviews with Rehan, has mentioned to be one of the most difficult opponents that he has ever faced. So those are some pretty strong uh, call-outs. And at the same time, um, again, Zaf, it was a pleasure to have you here. Um, you've answered a lot of questions that the community had to ask of you. And um, at the same time, um, it was really good to have a very fresh perspective on things uh, from, uh, from your end and your journey, and more specifically, your experiences at UFC 265. Um, if you have any final words. Um, yeah, I mean, I think just to, to any players who, you know, maybe doubting themselves, maybe, you know, thinking... I'm, not, I'm just not good enough. You know, I can't compete with these top level players. Really, it's about the consistency. You know, if you play, if you practice, if you consistently ask nicely, if, but if you're consistently asking high level players for spars, you are going to get better. You are going to improve and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Well, um, it's uh, like the way you've put it, practice makes permanent. And uh, that's a mantra that we try to do it at GameCale as well. We've been uploading a lot of content as of late. Uh, We've done a lot of interviews inside the UFC community and also from content creators in Pakistan. I actually interviewed one yesterday. The content of that is going to be up, uploaded soon as well. So for everyone in the community who has been able to support us, thank you all so much. We are still lagging a little behind in terms of our subscriptions. Most of the viewers watching this interview, about 77% of you are not subscribers. So uh, just to let you guys know, we put on uh, content like this over and over. If you enjoy this, do press the subscribe button. If you want to press the bell icon, you're going to get updated on the latest interviews that we've had. So again, it was a pleasure to have you here, Zaf. And for everyone watching this interview, this is Naveed signing off. Peace. Oh, I'm unable to find the recording button. <laughs> uh, got it.